Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, or really helps out the channel. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from Dazzling Fruit 4710 who says, everyone is telling me to leave my marriage. And of course, does come with an update as well. I, 34 female, married to 34 male for four and a half years. When we were dating, we would see each other two times a week, on the weekend. I realized later that it wasn't because of work. He would actually be home early, but wanted to play Dota, which is a strategy game, with his friends instead of being with me. This continued after we were married. The first Saturday after our wedding, he played Dota from 8 a.m. till 7 p.m., coming out only for a quick lunch. This has been a huge issue between us. I've asked him to play at different times when I was at work, but he wouldn't because his friends weren't available then. I asked him not to play around the time I came home from work as I was driving alone in the dark and anything could happen. He didn't listen and after one such afternoon when I needed him and he was playing his game and unavailable, I decided to leave. I stayed with a friend for a week, but reconciled after he said he will only play two games a day. Unbeknownst to me, Two games didn't mean two hours. These games can go on for much longer. Even though he'd come home earlier, he wouldn't do grocery shopping or cook. I was expected to do it all. If there was no food or I suggested takeaway, he would say, is this how you grew up? In a condescending tone and get moody and not talk or say, I'll just sort myself out. When I would try to talk to him, he'd continue to watch his screen and if I asked him not to, he'd just close his eyes and say, talk. If we watched a movie or video together, it was what he wanted. He didn't take an interest in any of my interests. He preferred I did things alone, like meet friends, so he could play his game. Anyway, we had our son in December 2020. He was his usual self during the pregnancy, initially excited but not very loving. Didn't talk to my unborn child or rub my tummy except to say I was getting big. I still did everything I was expected to do, including carrying heavy stuff. Because of COVID, he couldn't come to most appointments. He did drive me to the first two and sat in the car while I went in. Six days postpartum, his mum complained that I didn't want her to hold my son. He got angry and didn't listen to me when I said I was trying to get my son to latch as we were struggling to breastfeed. Huge fight ensued with his mum, making up complete lies about me. During the fight, he brought up how I don't cook a feast like his mum does. He also says that the nurses were laughing at me that he was doing things for my son while I was just in bed. Two days after C-section, two weeks postpartum and he called me abnormal and mentally unstable for being tearful. After everything described above, I was crying a lot, obviously. He would sit behind closed doors while I cared for our son the entire day just because he did two night shifts with our son a week. Yet he wouldn't think to give me a break for doing five nights. Worst part is, he was watching porn in this time. He said it was because our relationship wasn't good that he turned to porn, but I suspect it's been going on for quite a while. He told me once that he would ideally like to have sex once a month, yet he admitted to watching porn two to three times a week. I know it's been every day though. Before my son, I found an escort agency site on his phone twice. Coincidentally, the same site his brother uses to get his prostitutes. He told me it was a virus and I bought it. He constantly plays his game, watches his game on YouTube, even during early newborn days when he did nights and would feed our son. When he insisted that his mother holds our son, he went off and played a game. He says, I can't cope with our son because I wanted my mum the first few days after my emergency C-section. He called me a bad mother because I didn't cook supper. My son, always has home cooked food, but because one day I didn't make supper for him, husband, not son, he said my son was unlucky to have me as a mother. He said my son will soon see my bad side and cause the affection and love I give my son fake. I have done all the nights since my son was six months old and five of seven nights since six weeks old because he said he wasn't managing with the nights and work. Not once has he offered to do the morning shift so I can sleep in. Even if I ask him to keep my son, he either says don't take too long or just puts him in front of the TV slash his phone. He does not feed our son solids because he has no patience and he has never made him sleep. At six weeks old, he would leave my son alone in his crib while he watched YouTube videos. 
So everything falls on me, yet there is no recognition for what I do. Instead, he buys another woman, his banker, an expensive bag because she saved a lot of money and was supportive. Once I asked him directly if I was a good mother and he said, yeah. No other praise or encouragement the entire first year of my child's life. Not even a thank you. What are his redeeming factors? He works hard and provides financially. I buy everything needed for our son, but he pays the mortgage, utilities, and Wi-Fi. I always thought of myself as a strong woman. I'm disappointed that I got myself in this situation where I've just accepted all kinds of nonsense. And from the title and the way this post has been worded, the title is completely correct and I can see why everyone's saying that to you. I mean, there was paragraph after paragraph about the way that he treats you. And at the very end, we had two sentences about what is redeeming factors. Actually, one sentence that he works hard and provides financially. And that's the only reason you seem to be staying with him. So it sounds like in, in some ways, it's just you're staying with him for the child, maybe? But cynical baby ghoul says, it looks like you already know the answer. If this is a fear of doing it for the child, don't. It never works out for the child and only ends up in trauma. He can financially support all he wants, but that doesn't make him a father and it sure doesn't mean he has put in his share in the partnership. Anyone can provide a paycheck. What is lacking is compassion, love, understanding, commitment, healthy communication, etc. Not just with you, but with his own child too. Pack your stuff over the next few days and weeks. Take video proof of everything you witness in terms of him neglecting the baby and go. And take all that video proof for custody and divorce court. OP replies saying, Thank you for your comment. I'm grappling with, what if my son hates me later in life or blames me? I'm also afraid that my husband will badmouth me to my son and when he's older, my son chooses not to live with me. That would just devastate me. Valkyrie says, what exactly are you expecting after paragraph and paragraph of how he is a bad husband? You won't get a different answer on Reddit than from your real life people. Bay the Fay says, you know you deserve better in the way you write. The only one who can make the leap for what you deserve though is you. But as an internet stranger, I feel for your plight and I hope you can get yourself and your son to a better place. Leave that man child and get the good life you deserve. Lost Cultural says, honey, you wrote a whole book about his flaws and then a sentence of his redeeming factors, which are not even redeeming, just the bare minimum. Just leave. I don't know if this is even real. Just leave and don't look back. And one more from Slimy Sage who says, why did you even have a child with this idiot? Were the red flags not red enough before popping one out the oven? You might need to consider raising your kid as a single parent. He does not deserve a wife and kid, and I do not think you will feel his absence at this point. But it might be better for the kid than growing up with this tool as a father figure. Now we're going to go on to the update to find out what happened next. So thank you to everyone who commented on my previous post. I did read every comment, but it was closed down before I could reply. I spoke to my husband a few times since the post was made. He blames me for everything that has gone wrong says I forced him into marriage, forced him into have a child, forced him to stay in the city we are in. He says, since we've been separated, he can see how selfish and controlling I have been with his life because I tried to compromise on his gaming so we could spend quality time together and because I used to ask him to reciprocate certain things I would do for him such as greet him at the door when he came in from work, make his meals hot and share in his interests. He says he never wants to be with me because he hates me and has a lot of animosity towards me because I brought a child into this world, got what I wanted, and now I'm moving on. He says he feels like his old self again now, that he doesn't have any of my negativity around him. I said I would also feel like my old self if I wasn't doing all the parenting. He says it's my fault that our son is not sleeping through the night yet because I refuse to sleep train, specifically CIO just read that up and I think it stands for cry it out method. That part is true. I don't want to CIO with my son, but I still don't think it's fair to blame me for my son not sleeping through the night. He's teething, learning new skills and new words and his brain is growing immensely. I think it's normal. He says it's normal for a child to only want his mother because I am a woman. He says he can't do anything for our son at this age, but when he is more independent, he will be a father to him. He said that he would only get tinned food during the weekend and a decent meal on a Saturday, and that's because I'm lazy. 
I used to like sleeping and now because I can't sleep, I'm not coping with a child and complaining. He said I rely too much on my parents for psychological support and that I run to them any chance I get. I see my parents once a week for about four to six hours as all the grandkids are around and I don't want my son to miss out on family. He says he earns a lot more than me and I cannot provide the same quality of life for our child that he can. He says divorce will not be pretty and I don't have the finances for it. I was pretty silent throughout most of these discussions. I did tell him that I just want to be amicable and decent co-parents for our son. He said my son will see that I was the fault in the marriage and our relationship between my son and me will also break down like every other relationship I've had. He said all this in front of our nanny cam so it is recorded. I don't know if that means anything or if it will help in any way with a divorce and custody. Thank you for reading and sorry for the wall of text. What the, I know all of that was massive red flags all over but the one line that was jumping out to me straight away was he can't do anything for his son at this age but when he's more independent he'll be a father to him like just come rolling in at like what three years old or something door swings open now i'm ready to be a daddy <laughs> what the hell is that about anyway what do you guys make of this one what advice would you give to op in that situation let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's move on to another story now, before we do get into this story, I want to give you a couple of warnings that it is about outing someone. It does talk about conversion therapy. It's an incredibly sad and frustrating post to the very end. So I do want to throw those warnings out there for you. Please skip it if you think it's not for you. Look after your mental health, incredibly important. And let's go in to this story. And this next story comes from the subreddit Ask Parents from Throw Away Irony, who says, my female 16 brother male 24 outed my sister female 15 at his wedding reception and my parents are making a talk to someone at church my brother and his fiance were married last weekend but my sis iris has been punished and yelled at a lot this week my brother and i don't have a great relationship and when he lived with us he barely spent any time with us either my parents paid for him to go to college and before last weekend they were planning to help me and my sister go too my brother didn't have to pay for gas as long as his grades were good and they also bought him a car as well. My mum doesn't work, she stays at home, but my dad brings in over $100,000 a year. However, as a result of what happened last week, my parents told my sister they're not letting her do sports. She currently does dance or hang out with friends until she apologizes among other things, including talking to someone at church. And they've barely gotten up my brother, Matt, for humiliating her last week. When I tried to defend her and talk to them on her behalf, they also yelled at me and said they wouldn't pay for me to go to college if I don't stop because I should know it's wrong. But when I continued to argue with them, they said I'm not allowed to work next year and that I won't be taking driver's ed either. I don't know what made my brother out her last week, but he used to always complain about things my sister and I would be allowed to do before he could, like getting a cell phone earlier and stuff like that but that shouldn't have anything to do with it at all. When he spoke at the reception, he said that he felt led to say something that was on his mind and told everyone that my sister is gay. He also said that he needed prayer to get support and my parents has no idea that she was gay either. I knew because my sister told me some time back, but when I asked if she ever told Matt after the wedding, she said she didn't, but that she told Ariana, Matt's fiance. Ariana would sometimes drive my sister to sports if my parents couldn't, and they became close and would sometimes go out for ice cream too. I wasn't particularly close with her, but she was close to her. Iris said that Ariana was very supportive when she told her about it and how she was afraid to tell her parents. And she also said that Ariana showed her some resources when they could go out for ice cream or sports too. However, the only way that she figured Matt would know was if someone told him and, and thought that he'd be safe. That's her best guess about how he found out. But my parents are fairly religious and opinionated on such matters, and that's why she was punished this week too. I used to know someone in my friend's group who was gay, and my parents weren't crazy about him and encouraged me not to hang around him too. His parents went to our church, but he wasn't really religious, and dad said that his parents were failing him, among other things, and how he will be punished, because God never intended for that. They also have views on abortion that I disagree with that they wrote into their purity stuff too, but that's not here nor there. 
Iris was embarrassed and started crying after he outed her. And while dad later told my brother that he didn't like him saying that in front of everyone, he still yelled at her and took away sports and seeing friends until she talked to someone at church. That hasn't happened yet. And he's also yelled at me for trying to stand up to her. I could care less about what happens with my college because she's barely talking to me and mum took away her phone and laptop too. And she also was spanked where they talked about it too. Dad didn't show that he was upset at her at the wedding, but he's been yelling at her ever since we got back and a lot of times this week. And I don't know what to do. My brother also said that Ariana went to her parents the day after the wedding and has been staying there. And as of right now, she hasn't come back yet. He's also come over to talk to my parents, but I think that was more about Ariana for the most part. I can't tell you how much I hate him because she won't talk to me, but I try to tell my parents that they are wrong to punish her. They just cursed at me and took away some of my privileges too. And they also said I won't be going to driver's ed or working because I was being disrespectful and that if I keep it up, they won't pay for my college either. And I just feel hopeless. Is there anything I can do to get through to her or my parents before she has to talk to someone about what happened? My sister says she's scared because she's never seen them that upset when they talk to her and she won't be able to do sports or see friends or play games or watch TV or have a phone until she talks to some people at church. And she doesn't even know what they're gonna say either. Is there anything I can do to help assure her before that happens? Edit, I'm going to talk to a teacher about it and I'm considering telling her to just nod and perhaps lie for her own safety whenever she talks to someone at church because it's better than our parents thinking it didn't work and sending her to some conversion therapy. About Ariana, I'm honestly not sure and wonder if perhaps this was a matter of couples not keeping secrets, along with how she'd have no idea that he would ever do such a thing. My sister said that she actually regretted reaching out because when she told her to keep a secret, she should have known that couples probably don't keep secrets to use her words. Although no one really figured that Matt would ever do that. Looking at her past actions, she's drove my sister to sports and ice cream to provide her outlets and venting about her coming out which hadn't happened yet and probably won't now or anytime soon, along with resources. So I don't think it was malicious besides sharing because couples don't keep secrets sometimes, but we don't know for sure. And my sister actually wondered if Ariana tried to reach out to her, but because my parents took her phone, she has no way of knowing for sure. It's also important to note that Ariana went to stay in her parents' hotel the day after the reception and has ghosted Matt after what he did at the reception. But now we're gonna move on to that update to see what happened next. My sister was really afraid of having to talk to someone at church and the pastor she ended up talking to was one of the senior pastors. She hoped that it would be someone from youth but dad said that I couldn't be there with her when they talked and, and he didn't tell me when they'd be talking either. I figured it'd be on Sunday or Friday at youth and planned to just follow whenever they took her but mum took her straight from school on a day when I had sports afterwards and didn't expect it. And she didn't tell Iris that she was taking her to church until they were actually en route to the building. I hate how she went around my back to do it, but that's what she did and Iris had no time to prepare. I tried to talk to her when I got back and asked what happened, but she refused to tell me anything and is still refusing to. And she was still visibly upset after it too. I tried to tell her again that the safest thing to do is probably lie and lay low so that it passes sooner and they don't give her a hard time. And I told her that before that day too. But I still don't know what happened because she won't tell me and she's recently begun to lash out at me for trying to talk to her. She was distant before but now she just gets upset and wants nothing to do with me at all. I was also able to talk to a teacher a few days after my first post and I told her everything that I pretty much had written before. She agreed that my parents were being ridiculous about everything and that my brother was just as bad as them. But she also said that she would have to report it and I told her that I wanted her to do that too since she was also spanked in the aftermath of the reception. However, when she said that she could try to talk to Iris, I told her that maybe she would open up to her because she wanted nothing to do with me even after I told her about my intentions to tell a teacher only for her to get angry and tell me to leave her alone. She said that she would try and have to report it regardless. But my parents talked to me after they received a call from someone that they refused to specify about what happened. But they told me that Iris told them that I had spoke to a teacher which led them to getting a call and that they want me to leave Iris alone and stop talking about our family. 
Dad also said that I no longer have my college fund and that I'd be using the money to help Matt try to sue Ariana for being abusive by ghosting the day after the reception and that he had kicked me out if I bother Iris again. He didn't want me talking to her but I was able to at school because there is no way he could prevent us there. But as of writing this, there has not been a visit from anyone to our home. But again, she wanted nothing to do with me and tried to avoid me with the exception of telling me to leave her alone and just getting upset. As of writing this, she still wants nothing to do with me and she has been talking to my parents a lot more without the screaming from the aftermath of the reception. However, Ariana broke her silence along with her parents and told others why she left and she wanted nothing to do with Matt and mum said that she was slandering Matt, which is why she wants to sue her too. Ariana said she didn't know that, that Matt had such feelings towards his sister and that he was homophobic when he came across the LGBTQ resources. She was a crying for Iris and asked about who they were for. Personally, I didn't think she tried to hurt Iris because it made no sense that Matt and dad would try to sue her if she agreed. She also said that she wanted a divorce as well. However, dad took to social media and wrote that Ariana had previously tried to pressure Iris into sexual activity when she drove her to sports and that it led to being confused about being gay and that she tried to assault her. He also said that Iris told him about it, but I don't believe Iris told him that at all because he said it after she broke her silence. But when I went to ask Iris, she still refused to talk to me. I tried to stress to her that it's important to know because dad's accusing her of something that's very dangerous but she still refused to tell me much and dad made this post a couple of days ago so it's still fresh he also has a lawyer that's working with him and matt but iris is only talking to our parents so i feel really lost maybe they're pressuring her to avoid me and say nothing but she still won't tell me much when i asked her if dad made up that lie about ariana she refused to answer and just got upset but when i asked if they were pressuring her into saying nothing she didn't respond either and just asked me to leave However, when I directly asked if Ariana had ever done anything to her, she shook her head, but didn't give me any more than that. And I honestly believe she's being pressured into saying nothing and that they're possibly threatening her with further punishment. Should I keep trying to talk to her at this point or should I just keep going through my teacher? Iris refused to talk to my teacher last time and also told my parents that I'd gone to talk to her too. A few people recommended the police last time too but after my teacher said she would have to report to CPS, no one showed up and now my dad has a lawyer. I'm pretty sure they called because of the talk mum and dad had though. Does the fact that dad has a lawyer mean that CPS won't show because someone's legally involved? And would that go for the police too? I feel so lost and just want to help her, but I want to ask for help because there's so much going on. I'm sorry for this being so long, but I'm really lost on what to do next and just need advice on how to proceed from here. <sighs> and that one is, there's no words for that really. It's just bloody heartbreaking. There's no further update on that post either. And I just hope whatever they do, whatever sister's doing is that she doesn't stop looking for that help that she's seeking. But what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, as always, just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today, getting involved in the stories and the channel in general and over on Twitter and all the socials that you do get involved with me with it means the absolute world. Honestly, thank you so, so much. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, watch my Face, throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows. Okay, I know that today.